Welcome to Wonderlust. Today, hunting for ancient invertebrates in the old remains of the Western Interior Seaway some 67 million years ago. So Montana is often called a big sky country. And out here in Eastern Montana, we're currently by a tiny little town of about five people called uh, Ingemar. And the scale of the distance that you can see out here is just quite astonishing. Um, you can you know, easily see 12, 13 miles more in the distance. So we're currently uh, standing in the Bear Paw Shale Formation, which was a section of what was called the Western Interior Seaway through the Cretaceous period, towards the end of the reign of the dinosaurs. The landscape is so flat and so distant that it's really easy to visualize the, the waves of the ocean crashing through, standing under, you know, over a thousand feet of water some 68 million years ago. So, well, this year in particular, uh, there's a lot of vegetation out here. You can kind of see at the edge of these hillsides, um, these sort of rocky shale outcroppings, just the little bits of dirt crumbling down to the ground. And wherever you have those exposures on the hillside, you also have some of the, the life that existed in the seaway. So if you were to go out here, some 66, 67 million years ago out in the Western Interior Seaway and dive in with your ancient scuba gear. One of the most common things that you would see are these little kind of squid creatures that were covered in these conical shells and they can grow up to six to seven feet long, four or five inches in diameter. But usually, they're about this big. And this is actually two individuals that were fused together, covered up in the sediment remains and underwent the fossilization process. So you can see that kind of conical shape. And this is probably the most common uh, thing that you'll find out in the Bearpaw Shale Formation are these uh, uh, baculite creatures. And uh, you know, it's, it's never, um, it never grows dull. I've been out here hunting in some capacity for a couple decades. And, you know, every time I find these things, it still kind of transports me back uh, into that, that bygone age when this place was completely covered uh, in water. Pterosaurs flying overhead, a very different world than the one we live in now. So this is basically how the, the process works, is that you'll be kind of wandering around, keeping your eyes down onto the ground, and you'll often see this kind of a uh, shiny surface of things. Head up there and show you guys. So this is a great example of a uh, baculite covered with mother of pearl. You can see something that's like the, the brown shale and then this shiny white creature stuck onto the outside of the rock. Often you'll find the baculite's pretty, uh, pretty flattened just from the massive pressures of ocean sediment and uh, seaside action. But it's still, still beautiful. So here is a super, super nice example of the baculite. You can see the, uh, again, that kind of conical shape. And these critters would sort of extend out that way, extend down this way, 
and at the end of the shell would be a, a squid type critter and you can even see that mother pearl on the outside here just this super like beautiful kind of white material it's often influenced by the the rock layers that they're within so i've seen um ammonites which is maybe another critter that we could find out here uh will be covered with like this beautiful like you know red orange uh shiny material um but this is a really really good example of uh the kinds of baculites you can find out here that are kind of in less of a in less crushed state slightly more conical and lifelike So this, this is a great example of uh, mother of pearl that I mentioned earlier. And when they're well preserved, you can see this just super shiny surface on the outside um, mixed with various bits of maybe iron or something like that. And you'll often almost, I don't know if it'll actually come through on the camera, but you'll often have almost just like a rainbow reflection off of the surface. So it is super, super cool. So that's definitely the, the nicest thing I found today. It was just a little bit of shiny reflection, right? When you're walking up the one of these hillsides and this bright white catches the light, it really, really stands out. And so that's often a, a good thing to spot. So I'm pretty, pretty pleased with this. When I was talking about the reflective surfaces of the mother of pearl, that you can find of different colors. This is such a great example. This like almost rainbow spectrum of greens and purples and all sorts of other colors just reflecting off and shining in the light. So walking through this mud here on the ground when wet, the dirt becomes super, super sticky. As you can see attached to my boot there. And uh, the stuff will collect. You'll often have to use a stick or something like that to, to remove them. Uh, but it's a material that uh, they call gumbo. And you'll often see things like cows, hooves just totally covered with material. And uh, Kava has been uh, spending some time grooming her paw to remove it. I think she finds it about as annoying as we do as people. So, so far, I've had a uh, lot of baculites and really not all that much else so far. There's been maybe bits and pieces of critters called ammonites. So that are really similar to the uh, Modern day Nautilus has this kind of like spiral shell, kind of squid critter at the end. And then uh, there are also lots and lots of clams out here, kind of ancient seabed clams. The largest we found out here was about a foot and a half long and maybe a foot wide at the mouth. So there's some big, big critters. And if you keep your eyes out, you can find some cool stuff. We're kind of uh, working our way back to the road uh, where the Jeep is, but hopefully, hopefully by the end of it, we'll be uh, find something else. And if not, it's still just a beautiful day of adventure, having fun. Super, super windy, but how's that for a view? 